Do you want a way to control devices on your Sonos Switch without your smartphone? Want to add even more functionality to the Sonos Bridge? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to do this with the Sonos Switch. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ryan Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to set up the Sonos Switch to work with the Sonoff Bridge. Now you try to say Sonoff three times. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbytes.withronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We're going to be covering how to set up the Sonoff switch in this video. First, we're going to go over the required items. Then we'll go through installing it, and then we'll get around to configuring the switch and showing you how to make it work for you. Well, in the first video in this series, we showed about how to set up the Sonoff bridge, which is the kingpin to all this because it talks to all of the devices on the Sonoff family over Zigbee, and it will also talk to other devices over wireless. So you've got kind of the best of both worlds here. So this is going to get us up and running. Now we've also got the Sonoff outlet, and that was the first thing we set up to kind of give you a practical use case of for what it was capable of doing. Well, now what we're going to be doing is adding the Sonoff switch to that mix. Now the Sonoff switch is going to be a little bit different. Now you can see it's got a fingerprint on it, so it very clearly tells you this is a switch. This is the part that may get a little head scratching. Sonoff, I think, is in the middle of a engineering change of some type because the website listing says it doesn't come with a battery, but the information on that comes with the unit says it does. So if you don't have a supply and this, it says it needs the CR2450. It's a three volt button battery. It looks a lot like a 2032, but just a lot thicker and a little bit bigger. You'll need to get one of those because even though the card inside the box for the Sonos Switch tells you to remove the battery saver paper, not only is there not battery saver paper, but there's not a battery. So at least with the one that I got, and when I went back and looked at the website listing, yes, it said it didn't come with a battery, but yet all the other Sonoff devices that I've gotten did. So go figure. It won't hurt to have a supply of the 2045s available, or actually, did I say 2045? 2450. You need a supply of the 2450s on hand, and that's something put in the fridge. Not I've never really frozen button batteries before, but put it in the fridge. That should slow down the chemical in the reaction in the battery and help you keep them around a little bit longer. Okay. Had to take a little bit of a pause between getting the Sonoff switch unpacked and ready to go. Ran into a little bit of a problem. The battery that I thought was in it, which I had conflicting information as to where it wasn't, wasn't there. I grabbed two other Sonoff devices. Their batteries arrived DOA, which explains why Sonoff didn't send batteries or at least is apparently stopping the process. So I had to order some batteries. So note to self, make sure you get the batteries these need, which these are going to be, I believe it's the 2450. Yeah, 2450, which is not a common battery. I mean, at least in terms of the, bat the button batteries I used. Had another little bit of a learning process along the way. You will notice, and I can't really show it to you easily, but you've got the hole up here and then there's another hole down below it. That's the reset and you can see it a little bit easier. You need to have something very sharp and I'm talking like a threading needle type of sharp because a paper clip might not even fit through this. So what we'll do is we'll switch over here to the smartphone and I will put the battery in and I double check this one with my voltmeter to make sure it was okay. So we'll tap on okay. And if it doesn't find it here in a little bit, then this is when we'll go to plan B. Now, sometimes I've had them find them right out of the box. Other times we've, it just will do it when it's ready. And we may actually have to put it into pairing mode. So I will go ahead and grab this because at the 30 second mark, it hasn't gotten it. So we will go and hit the reset button. And once the reset button has taken effect, and I've got it held down, you will see the LED blink a couple of times on the Sonoff switch. So hopefully we should discover it. Okay, there we go. It found it. Well, better late than never. And I'm going to go ahead and let it finish its discovery cycle. And we will say confirm. Now, something to keep in mind here, putting this cover back is, you got to think, look at it a little bit. There's an arrow right there you will see, and then there's a matching arrow 
on the cover so you need to make sure those are both lined up and pointing in the same direction because we want to make sure that this is okay so everything seems to be working there so now what we can do is we'll go back over here and now we've got this in place and if we go ahead and we'll click it once and we should see something come through sometimes it takes it just a second to come through let's clear the log all right okay so it just it just then came through okay that's fine just this is a good diagnostic step to take and i've already got the sonoff smart outlet in place so we'll go back here and you can probably rename these to something a little more descriptive so the logo you see that's in the upper left hand corner of the three that's going to be the switch the one to the right is the smart outlet they're not exactly doing okay because you can see there because it's got the on off button and we can tap that on and off just again part of the just the double checking to make sure what's going on so now to get this up and running this is when we go to the scene so we'll tap on scene this is where we get everything linked together so if we go plus on the if and then we will do smart device and you've got three options on the switch so you've got clicked double clicked or long press i'm going to go with clicked to turn something on and it is check mark there so we'll tap on save and then we'll go select the what we're going to turn on so smart device and this is the smart plug smart outlet whatever you want to call it and that's where it's going to be handy to have these things labeled but that's that's a decision that you can make so by default it goes on we'll tap on save there is not a toggling option on here so we've got the turn on so we will just go on for purposes of our labeling now we'll add a second scene and trigger and then smart device then we will tap the switch and we will go long press you can do, do double click but you probably won't be consistent on whatever you do so save and then we'll go to smart device and we'll click on the smart outlet smart plug and make sure you tap off because it's not going to change modes unless you do that so we'll go save effective period i'm not worrying about that one that's something if you're going to get into a little more advanced stuff then you can deal with that we'll click on save and then we will type off hit save again well now while we're in the my scenes area i'm going to press the button once Okay, and if we go back over here, you will notice that the smart outlet has turned on. So if I just tap it again, nothing happens because it's the action is already done what we wanted to do. So if you do a long press and that would be like two, three seconds, then you will see it turn off and you will also see the state logged, the state of the change logged on that device. So this is a very basic way to get this up and running. All right, well, this is just part one of a multi-part piece for the Sonoff devices that use the Sonoff bridge. So this time we've dealt with the switch. I'm going to have the temperature and humidity sensors that we'll be doing in the next video. And the whole goal of this is to have something that you can take with you, minimal muss, minimal fuss. And even though this does require Wi-Fi for you to talk to it, I've got a video coming where I'm going to show you how to deal with that as well. So thanks for watching so far. Be looking for the next video in this series. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode and thanks for watching.